with uh, Rachel Moore, who is live along the parade route. So Rachel, tell me, where exactly are you and what are you seeing right now? Good morning. So we're at the very beginning of the parade route. We can see people who are, are acts that are turning off of the parade route uh, and onto the street where they're going to come down to you. Las Vegas Fire and Rescue just passed by as well as Henderson Fire Department. They just passed by and I'm here talking to a family this morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming out here. Just what are you excited about for today? Just to teach my kids about their black holster because they're biracial. So I want them to learn everything that they need to know about their biracial culture and being black, being part of black, how it is out here in the streets. I want them to learn the different things that Martin Luther King did out here on the street. Very, very important. And I can see you guys are getting some candy, getting passed out as well as some bees. These look so cute. How are you guys enjoying the parade so far? I'm loving it. It's I come fun, every yeah. year, so I love it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to show you some of the other uh, performances coming by. Matt Kelly Elementary School is about to walk by as well. And I'm going to send it back over to you guys. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for that. So exciting to see all the, the young people here that are a part of this particular parade. I love it. It makes me smile when I see all these kids. These, uh, Antonio Pierce said it earlier, our future Raiderettes potentially as they make their way down the street. Oh, I'm definitely seeing lots of future leaders and change makers in this audience as well. It's so important to get people of all ages out to this parade. That is exactly what we're seeing right now. And now we've also got our Isabella Martin. Uh, I believe she's over at the end of the parade route. We're going to send things over to her for a look at what she's seeing there. Isabella, what are you seeing? Good morning, Justin and Anjali. It is so amazing to see all of the young people and families coming out here to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, I've got a family right with me, Stephanie and um, Leon. Leon. Tell me, why is it so important to come out here and bring your kids? I think all of our children need to know why we're celebrating this day and why Martin Luther, the impact that Martin Luther King had on the nation. Yes, and Stephanie, you told me that you guys are not normally in Las Vegas, um, but when you are, you know, you make sure to come here. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? We're serving in the military. Uh, Leon here just recently retired. We just got, and I'm retiring in a month. And um, we just want to make sure that we honor and celebrate this holiday, not just sit at home and take a day off from work. We make sure that, this is my grandson, Nigel, make sure that Nigel um, is educated on why we celebrate this day and why is it so important. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate that, you guys. Abel, how's it looking over there where you are? <laughs> That's right, Isabella. We are standing here with Upward Bound. Funny enough, I actually attended Upward Bound and was a part of the program up at UNR. Now they're here in Southern Nevada for UNLV. And joining me is one of the members of the Upward Bound program here at UNLV. I mean, just tell me, why is it so important? I remember when I was in Upward Bound, this college prep program was so critical to truly engage with the community. So tell me, why are you guys out here today? We're here to just spread the word uh, about college, first of all. Uh, we're, we're a pre-college program. We want to help kids get into college, graduate from college. And we're also just passionate about the community, um, you know, the events that happen on UNLV. Uh, we just, we're here to just, you know, just spread the word about uh, the love and the, the UNLV strong here. And so uh, we're just trying to get behind the community and just, um, you know, just show our love here. And how important is it for you to also bring out students to events like this where we are showing so much diversity here in our community. We're showing what Las Vegas is truly all about. How important is that for you? It's very important. Uh, we are a uh, first generation college program. And so we just want to, you know, it brings people together. When we have people from different um, walks of life, uh, it brings people together, it just it strengthens the community. Yes, Thank you so much for taking time today and speaking to us. Again, this is just one of many of the entries that are here for Martin Luther King Jr. celebrating this incredible day. We'll have much more coverage right after this break. Welcome back to this live broadcast of the 42nd Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade here in downtown Las Vegas. We are joined right now by the man who founded it all 42 years ago, Mr. Wendell P. Williams, the man of the hour. Now, I want to start off with the special surprise that you got just about an hour before the parade took off. Tell me about what you got and how excited you are. Well, you know that 
This is the first time in my life I've been speechless. <laughs> so I was gifted by the Super Bowl committee, two Super Bowl tickets, and I was speechless, but my, my wife went crazy about it. <laughs> so I'm so thankful for the community and for what they did in recognizing uh, the longevity that I put with it. But not as much as I am with Channel 13 broadcasting this parade live. A little plug, plug. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, 42 years, right? So how does it keep changing over the years? What are you finding? Well, it keeps changing. You know, I talked to a lady. She said she was in the parade in the, in the sixth grade. Her daughter was in the same school uh, with the same little group. And now their granddaughter is. So sometimes I get a little stressed, but I see the, the, the happiness the kids get from it. It's all worthwhile because that, that leads us to believe that we can teach Dr. King's blueprint to the younger generation. That's the whole, that's what it's all about. Because out of all the holidays we celebrate in America today, we celebrate 11, it's the only holiday where it's a day on, not a day off. It's a day of service. So uh, we try to, the parade is just an indication of highlight to remind people of Dr. King's blueprint. Now, Wendell, you told me last week that, you know, people are talking about how big the parade is this year, and that's great, but you said you measure the success of the parade by how representative it is of the community, right? Absolutely. It represents the entire community. That's the most important thing to me. It's not the number of people, but if it's, if it's representative of our whole community, I'm very pleased. Because Las Vegas is a great place to be, but we still got to strive to do better. There's a lot of turbulence and uncertainty in the world today, and we want to show that, that we all can get along. We don't have to all be together, go out together, but we have to respect each other. So when you see all these people coming together for this particular day, what does that do for your heart? Oh, it, it fills my heart. You know, that's why I keep doing it. I, uh, you know, starting out, as you know, with just probably 10 or 11 entries in the beginning, and to see it grow to this magnitude on how the city has come out and embraced it, it makes me feel good, but, you know, because... Uh, I grew up under the auspices of Dr. King when I was a young boy, and I know how important it is to learn that uh, violence is much more better than, 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 than uh, much more, peace is much better than violence. Now, one thing we've really been blown away by is just the amount of young people at the parade this year. Is this how you ensure that this is a tradition that carries on long after any of us are here? It is, and you know, uh, I saw some young people in their little group, they were selling cupcakes on the side of the road to pay for to get in the parade wow. for 25 cents a cupcake. I said, "Go home. Don't worry about it. Come and be in the parade. You know, go get go get ready. We want we want all the children to be in it. So, and we have uh, some drill teams from out of town. One, the Black Diamonds drill team, who, who has been here before. They stopped in all parts of California and picked other teams up. Yeah. So they're here today. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you understand the impact of this parade. You grew up in Louisiana yourself, so we know that this city continues to grow with a lot of people moving here. For folks who may not be familiar with you, this might be their first uh, this first birthday in, in, in Las Vegas. Tell them about how you came up with this idea and how this ended up here in Las Vegas. Well, actually, when I moved to Las Vegas in 1977, uh, there was no mention of Dr. King on his birthday. And in the South, he's revered. And I just couldn't understand why we had no celebration. So from my hometown, I have five students here today. They were here for the Tech Summit. The Tech Summit we had uh, Friday, we had 650 students that were training in technology. So I have some of my home people here today. I have one of my classmates and a young lady from my high school who's serving as parade ambassadors. It's great. I love it. And you mentioned that Tech Summit. That is just one of the many events happening over the course of King Week. But you told me you've got a new slogan you're rolling out. King Week is every week. King right? Week every week. That's what, that's what we're going to do next year, which means that, get, that gives us the opportunity to do more things that are positive in our community. Reach out to schools. Reach out to people in homeless shelters, hospices, uh, people who have housing issues. I think we can do more than just this one week. Well, and that's what it's supposed to be, right? The dream isn't just for one day. It's 24-7. It's it's, exactly. It's 24-7, and that's how it's going to be the next The next leg of, of MLK Week. It's going to be every week. All right. <laughs> Mr. Williams, we know you probably have a million places to be along this parade route, so we're going to let you go. But thank you so much for spending some time with us and for continuing to ensure this is a tradition that sticks here in Las Vegas. And thank you. You know, again, I think the, uh, the elevation of it lately 
has been because of Channel 13, obviously. Oh, well, thank, you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's you. what this whole broadcast is all about. Uh, now, Wendell actually told me a few days ago he believes that there's more intrigue around this uh, parade this year for three reasons. One of them being that it is a major political year, so we are going to be seeing some folks running for office along the parade route. Uh, another reason is the fact that we are broadcasting it. And then the third reason is because of the Las Vegas Super Bowl, which is going to be here. Uh, we'll see that giant football making its way down the parade route at some point. But right now what we're actually seeing is a bunch of paramedics and uh, Clark County Fire Department. Uh, we're going to leave you with this live look now as we head over to commercial break. We'll be right back with much more right after this. Welcome back to the 42nd Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Parade here from downtown Las Vegas, having a great time as we continue to see more and more crews making their way down the street. We are at 4th and Bridger, and look at these little ones in their fire suits decked out, ready to go. They are the future. This is really King's dream being realized, seeing these young kids who imagine what they can be in the future and then being able to accomplish it. Just one of the many folks out here for this parade. Yeah, this becoming a yearly tradition for so many families here in Las Vegas. We love to see it. Now, Justin, you mentioned at the top of this broadcast that it's not just us out here. We've got a whole crew of Channel 13 members all along the parade route. We even have one crew in the parade. That is our Justin Bruce, meteorologist and traffic anchor. We're going to send things over to him who is in live drive right now. Justin, uh, what are you seeing from where you're at? Anjali, we have seen lots of different things here. We still actually haven't started our parade route. When you have the largest lineup in MLK parade history, you're going to have the largest staging area. That's a look behind us in Live Drive. A couple of blocks back, we've seen ROTC groups, marching bands, drum lines. Was talking to some fine folks from the Nevada Freemasons, whom you see there. Girl Scouts is a force for desegregation. That's a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. I was not familiar with. We're right next to the Girl Scouts looking for cookies. I don't see any right now, but that's who I believe is going to be right in front of us. We're still about a block away from getting into the parade at 4th and Gas. We're in the staging area at 4th and Hoover, but again, just illustrates uh, how big of a, a day this is for our entire community. Everyone coming together, so many different groups, seen a lot of smiles, a lot of handshakes, a lot of hugs. And just a lot of people out here, so exciting to have this many folks celebrating the legacy and honoring the work done by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So as we uh, are about to begin the parade, we're literally talking to our parade organizer right now. Abel, we'll send it up to you. Where are you and what are you seeing as the actual parade route gets underway? Justin, you already know, I love to dance. We are right now on Lewis and 4th, and let me introduce you to Matt Kelly Elementary School. Just take a look at some of these kids right now. They have some moves for sure. I need to take some lessons from them because they have so much energy, they're so talented, and joining me now is actually Miss T. She is a teacher at this school on the west side of town, on the historic west side as well. So Miss T, talk to me about how incredibly important is it to bring kids out to events like this, to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade right here in Las Vegas. I feel as though it's very important. And then this is our first year having a drum line. So as you can see, they're doing a great job and they're having the time of their lives. They're excited. They are so talented, so ta and they're out there shaking it. They're out there having a blast. I love it, but more so than anything, I mean, it's just so great to engage with our community, to see all the different diversity. I mean, how critical is this something that you want to teach to your students too, to come out and see this as well? This is something that's amazing. I think that we didn't do it last year, so this was the excitement was building and intensifying, and they love it. Yes. We're going to keep on walking over here. I want you guys to continue to see how incredible these dancers and drumline is. And Miss T, I want to ask you as well, do you come out and participate almost every year? Um, every year besides last year, but yes, this is something that we look forward to. And yes, and this is our principal right here as well. Incredible. Yes. Hello, and I wanted to ask you as well, first and foremost, what is your first and last name? Jarrell Hall. Incredible. 
incredible. So, Mr. Terrell, tell me a little bit about what you guys are seeing here. Just how incredibly important is it to have your drum line, to have your cheerleaders out here on such a special day like MLK's birthday? So, MLK Day is especially important to a school like Matt Kelly. You can see on the back of our shirts, our school motto is dream it, believe it, achieve it. So, at Matt Kelly, we, are, we embody the dream. Where we're out here, we're showing our, our musical skills, our dancing skills. These are both two of our after school pro, um, clubs, the drum line, the drum lions, and our dance squad. And they're just happy to be here. Well, I think it's working together, making the dream come alive. Well, thank you so much for your time for speaking with us. You guys have done an incredible job, and your drum line is absolutely amazing. I think I'm going to go take some lessons, Anjali and Justin, because these kids know what's up, that's for sure. Yeah, those kids can definitely teach all of us a thing or two. <laughs> They've got the moves. Also, these folks have the moves as well. Look at them right now. I love this. This is part of Power 88.1, uh, a big part of this community here in Las Vegas. Been around for a while, and you can hear them on 88.1 on your radio station. I know that's one of the radio stations I listen to when I'm in between breaks after our show finishes up. They do some really wonderful work with the youth in this community as well, which I know you are very involved with. Uh, I believe they actually have students come in and help produce the radio show, right? Yeah, the Team Empowerment Program. And so they meet on Saturdays. I got a chance to go to the radio station and see those kids. I mean, I don't know how many organizations have opportunities where kids get a, get a chance to be on air. And so seeing them, seeing their growth, their development, how they're learning and progressing as the years go by is absolutely incredible and fantastic and really a big part of this community. The focus on the youth is so important in this community and really on full display today. Now you see this large van making its way down 4th Street right now. We got some ladies in red inside. They were dancing earlier and right now we've also got some student ministry groups as well. So that goes back to the, uh, the youth focus that we're seeing this year. We've also got two youth grand marshals that hopefully we'll be seeing at some point along this parade route. They are really, really impressive in their own right. And uh, the founder of this parade, Wendell Williams, told me that, uh, you know, the reason he includes the youth grand marshals is because he feels that they can be so multifaceted just with the amount of opportunities that are available to them in this day and age. You know, our youth grand marshals, they are honor roll students, athletes in various sports. They have their own YouTube channel doing Raiders highlights, have their own business. So very impressive, and we'll be sure to bring it to you live when we see them but right now we're going to send things over to commercial break we'll be right back after this Welcome back. We are bringing you a live view of the 42nd annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Parade from downtown Las Vegas. It is such an incredible morning so far, Justin. Yes, indeed. We're showing you live pictures from the parade route. We've also got some pretty amazing guests, including this gentleman right here, Craig Knight with Power 88. We just yes. saw you a minute ago dancing on the float. You're yes. clearly having a good time. I, absolutely. This is wonderful. I think this is one of the best parades yet. Um, the pre-show was awesome. So much great talent, singing, and um, it's just wonderful. And I'm so happy for Wendell P. Williams because he put his heart and his soul and his passion into this every year. And it started with 13 entries back in 1981, and now here we are at 240 entries. So if you notice, if you're watching, we keep it moving. No one gets to stop and perform because it's just too many. But it's a great day. Uh, the Lord has blessed us with a, a terrific day. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to Jeff, the GM. <laughs> Shout out to our boss. Yes, your boss. I'm trying to help you all out. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, we know that preserving the legacy of Dr. King is something that you're passionate about as well. And Absolutely. you practice that every day at your station. I know you guys yes. have had a vote in power campaign. Yes. So this being an election year, tell me about what that campaign did in terms of getting out the vote in the black community. So vote in power was a wonderful thing. We had a lot of great partners, NV Energy, and also we had um, just the community involved. And the whole thing was to educate our community and all about the, the power of voting, how it works, and the importance of it, and um, to get out and vote. You know, we don't care who you vote for. It doesn't matter. The, the thing is to be a part of the process. 
So voting power took place during an interesting election year. It was 2020. And actually COVID was happening and the shutdown was happening. And all of the seniors, like my parents and their friends, they were concerned because they, they march for voting rights. So they are serious about casting their votes and, and their vote being counted. So with COVID and at the time, seniors were the most vulnerable. So it would be dangerous for them to go out and vote. And then the whole thing was happening. You know, will my vote be counted because things was happening with the post office and all of that. So we came up with an idea of voting power, drop it like it's hot, ballot drop off. <laughs> so we went to the election department and we bypassed the post office and the seniors were able to drive through, hand their ballot to the election officials at the department and watch them put it in. And I tell you, they were so grateful because they were really stressed out. We're not going to be able to vote, or if we try to vote, we can, you know, catch COVID and possibly die. Or if we do vote, is it going to count? So we really help uh, ease the community, especially the seniors during that. So we're going to be doing it again this year, educating people, letting them know how to vote. Uh, it's, a, it's a slew of new voters coming up that was in high school back then, and they're, you know, eligible to vote. So we want to make sure we keep the, the process going and everyone understanding what it means. And this parade is really an opportunity for people to see yes. some of the folks who are running. Yes. We've seen, with this being an election year, we are seeing a number of candidates. We're seeing front. everyone. Right. <laughs> okay. It's not a number. And, and if you're not out here, uh, bad move. <laughs> well, uh, for, for people who... who aren't necessarily familiar with the voting process, right? This could be an opportunity for them yes. to experience, you know, who is running for office. Absolutely. How important is that as the as Oh, it's very important. And what we do at Power 88, too, we also educate our listeners on the different positions, you know, the different uh, legislation and what it all means, you know. So it's like uh, if, if, if an assemblyman is, is uh, responsible for legislation and passing bills, you don't call the mayor. That's not the mayor's job. So we have to educate everyone on what everyone, what the governor does, the mayor does, you know, the senator. What does it mean? Federal, state, local. Because people really didn't know. And they would just come out during the presidential election and not the midterms. Yes. So we have to teach them the midterms are even more important than the uh, presidential elections. So, and, uh, and as a black community, we never really supported midterm elections. As a matter of fact, in 2014, a lot of um, uh, local elected officials lost their seats because the community, the 89106 and 89030, they didn't know it was election day. And then from that, we started a, we started a uh, program called The Breakdown. And The Breakdown is every Wednesday night from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Power 88 with myself. They call me Professor Knight, <laughs> Sweet Lou Collins, and Lady AK. And uh, 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 Franklin Verley, who is deceased now, he was the head of that idea to be on air and educate. So we've been doing it going on 10 years now. It's incredible. Now, you also mentioned there's a new generation of voters coming up in this election cycle. There's also a new generation of young people maybe attending this parade for the first time. Yes. What do you hope newcomers take away from watching this incredible display of unity here? I hope they take this experience and it motivates them to, to support it every year and to help grow it, tell other people, and participate maybe, be in the parade, come up with some ideas. Shout out to Wendell P. Williams, who's passing the torch to some new marketing in Power 88. So I'm working together with Shondell Newsom to see every year, how can we make it better? How can we make it bigger? And right now, it's bigger and better already, but it can always be better. And having you know, KTNV TV here. I feel like I'm at in Pasadena or something like that <laughs> at the Rose Bowl parade. This is so cool, you know. We will take that. We appreciate yes, that. Yes, yes. Uh, what, what is your favorite part about the parade? Um, the community. Yeah. The community being out. You know, we, you know, we're going through hard times right now. Everyone's kind of stressing out, and this helps you kind of take your mind off of it and to see the beautiful community smiling, laughing, and having families here. You know, this is like a family moment that we don't we don't do. We haven't done often, you know, but the MLK parade definitely kicks the year off to maybe bringing families together, uh, reunions, you know, so forth. So it's a great thing. Exactly. Today is all about celebrating, but also, of course, acknowledging all the work that lies ahead. Yes. Mr. Knight, thank you so much for joining uh, us. We thank you for having it. me. I, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks, you are looking at more entries here in this parade as we continue to broadcast live from the 42nd annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday parade. Looks like this is the Sentinel Battalion. 
U.S. Army JROTC, one of a number of JROTC groups that are a part of this parade. Yeah, we are actually seeing students, JRTC members from every corner of the valley, really. And we're going to show you more of this right after this commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back as we continue to bring you a live look at the 42nd annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday parade from downtown Las Vegas, Nevada's largest parade, and this year it's even larger. We just <laughs> We're hearing more this. than 200 entries. Yeah, 240 is what Craig Knight just said. Uh, this is just one of them. Uh, we've got a long way to go in this parade, but also very exciting. A while ago, we talked about uh, or talked to Justin Bruce, who was in the parade. Because it is so big, he said he hadn't started moving yet, so we want to check back in with him to see if he has started moving. Justin, are you on the move? Oh, we, we are on the move. We have been saying hello to tons of people, and uh, we'll give you a view in front of us. Oh, I actually see uh, Abel Garcia there uh, on the left edge of the screen. I'm surprised he's not dancing right now. Uh, but there's, oh, he's got, he's busting a little bit of a move. He can't help himself. And then here's a look at the crowd. Everyone we've waved hello to has said, put me on TV. Oh, there's Abel again. Put me on TV. We said, you are on television right now. Hey guys, thanks for being here. So it's a lot of fun. Everyone's obviously in a, a great mood, big, big sense of community. We are right behind uh, a group from MGM. And uh, hi kids, how are you? You guys are on the news right now. So <laughs> everyone wants to be on the news. We're having a great time. Uh, spirits are high and just a, a, an overall sense of community and celebration. So Isabella, we are having a grand old time in this large, large parade. We'll kick it up to where you are. How are things going in your neck of the parade? Justin, yes, I am having so much fun here. And so is the Preya family, a family of six. Um, Mr. Preya, how long have you been living in Las Vegas and why did you decide to come to the MLK parade today? I've been living here 18 years, almost 20 and never been here and my kids decided to tell me to come here to check it out and it's beautiful i mean something that i never expect that all these years i missed it you know it's something nice and you were telling me that you didn't know much about dr martin luther king jr but your kids did yeah they did and they were telling me a whole bunch of things and i was like wow it's kind of surprised that you know they, they know a lot and i didn't yeah, and Bella is a fifth grader, and you were telling me a little bit about Dr. Martin Luther King as well. Bella, what um, is so important about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that, you know, we're gathered here today to celebrate him? Uh, something important about him is, like, uh, he gave us freedom, and, like, he gave us civil rights and stuff. Yeah, well, thank you so much for sharing. Nice to meet you all. Um, Justin, Anjali, back to you all. <laughs> Isabella, thank you so much. Now, we uh, just saw a car roll by with a little banner that said, Be the Dream. That really speaks to the theme of the parade this year. Again, it is living the dream together. We make the dream work. It's a bit of a shift from that theme last year, which was it all starts with me. We're seeing that shift from kind of that personal responsibility to now that collective responsibility, how it really is on each and every single one of us to make that dream work. You see that on a banner right there. It's a banner showing Dr. King, and then it says, Together we make the dream. Dream work. Such a fitting theme here as so many people come together to celebrate this very important day, Justin. Yeah, you mentioned about us doing our part, but also the communities and the corporations in our community that are doing their part as well. This is something that really applies to everybody. What can you do each and every day to embody the spirit and the dream that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had? Again, you said the theme this year, together we make the dream work. Something so very important. Up next, we have the Vegas NFL flag. Now, this is operated by the Vegas Sports Foundation. They operate NFL youth flag football for boys and girls between the ages of 5 and 14. Usually, they see more than 1,000 participants a year. So parents, if this is something you want to do, the spring season starts March 3rd. The deadline to register is January 21st, and it is an eight-week regular season and at least one postseason game. 
And again, we are seeing that running theme, kind of the unofficial theme, I would say. It's kind of that focus on the youth here. It is, we've seen so many kids, and they're actually lining up the fences along the side of Ford Street right now, trying to catch a glimpse of this parade that is slowly making its way down Fourth. Uh, it started at Fourth and Gas, and it's going to head all the way down to uh, to Ogden. So, so much more left to see. But for now, we are going to send things over to commercial break. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes here. Las Vegas, welcome back to the sights and sounds of everybody trying to actualize and realize the dream that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had all those years ago. So nice to be here with you as we continue to watch, see the young kids that are participating in this parade, all the folks who have made their way out here trying to maybe catch a beat or two yeah. as being thrown from the parade participants. Such a wonderful sight to see. Of course, we have crews all along the parade route kind of getting different vantage points. So right now we want to check in with our Rachel Moore. Rachel, tell us where are you and, and show us what you're seeing there. Angelie, Justin, we are at the very beginning of the parade route. So we are seeing all the acts come by uh, as as they get on the uh, 4th Street. We saw Justin Bruce and Live Drive go by as well. We saw the Girl Scouts of America. We see right here moments of blessing, house of prayer, as well as Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. I do want to introduce you to a special someone who I found along the parade route. Wilson, can you please come and join me this morning? Thank you so much for being here to just tell us how much fun you're having about be, um, um, being a part of this parade. Well, I'm really enjoying myself in spite of not having a jacket on. <laughs> what is the significance of MLK to you? The significance of MLK is a cultured, um, worldwide phenomenon of love and togetherness. And it, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. So we're having a great time out here, right? I'm having a lovely time. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're going to show you more at the parade. We have a lot of fire trucks coming by as well, as well as a lot of politicians. We've had organizations do stepping groups, marching bands go by, and we're going to send it back to you guys. All right, Rachel, thank you so much. These folks in the crowd are getting excited. <laughs> Pink Box Donuts is making its way through, and everybody wants a T-shirt. Take a listen. I'm here for it. All right, we are live here along this track. This is Delta Sigma Theta. And let me show you these moves right now. You can just see these girls and these ladies are in action. Right now we did the electric slide a little earlier and let me tell you, it is incredible, but just such an honor to be a part of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday parade right here in downtown Las Vegas. Such an incredible opportunity. And join me are these two lovely ladies. They already taught me their signature. Oh, 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 oh. Am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? Yes, doing doing it right? Yeah. Okay, good. Tell me how important it is for you to be out here today celebrating such an honorary figure here in our nation. Um, we're happy to be out here because we're community service oriented and that's what Martin Luther King was all about. 
and um, because of us, it's a group of us. It's every every angle that we cover, and we're just happy to be the other seven states for the incorporated. I love it. And now tell me as well, I mean, you see all these wonderful young women here who you guys are serving as an inspiration to continue to move forward, to be a part of these community engaging events. Why is that so critical for future generations like this? It's very important for future generations to make sure that they are out active in the community. We are here as role models for them and we have them out here participating in the event. Martin Luther King Jr. was about service. Today is a day of service. We are also passing out kids on period poverty, educating the community about period poverty and the importance of it. So we're not only out here walking in the parade, but we're also doing some community service, educating the community the importance of period poverty. Incredible. Thank you so much for your time for speaking to us. Like I mentioned a little earlier, these wonderful ladies, they were doing the electric slide with us. And you know who else would be incredible to do the electric slide with me? Although he's been in live drive going down the parade route right now. But Justin Bruce, I know you would kill it out here if you could be out here with me right now. Uh, Abel, you don't even want to know how good of a dancer I am not. But I tell you what. Hey guys, we are having a grand old time. We've said hello to thousands of people, everyone who is lined up along the parade route, especially when they know that we have a live camera on top of live drive. That's a good way to get a lot of waves. Hey, you're on TV right now. So everyone's having a great, great time. We just actually went through, we just went through the main anchor, the, the main site of the parade where the stage is, where Justin and Anjali Patel are located. And man, the crowds are thick. The crowds are thick out there this morning, and uh, that is such a good, good, good thing. Uh, you can really feel the community kind of coming together in a day of, of celebration. And as Anjali mentioned earlier, the theme this year, it's kind of pivoted. Hi, guys. It is, you know, now a work that we all need to do as a community. And if the crowds at the parade here are any indication, you know, that work is, is well on its way. But Justin and Anjali, I was excited to see you guys when we were driving by. Were you excited to see Live Drive? <laughs> Justin, we're always excited to see you, whether it's 4.30 in the morning or 11 o'clock. We're happy to see you any time of day. Now, before we actually saw Justin Bruce go by and live drive, before that, we had a large contingent of people from MGM Resorts. So that was really cool to see. We've actually got a really special guest joining us right now from MGM Resorts, Charles Gladney. So tell us about what being a part of this means to you. Well, this be means a part of really a 14-year presenting sponsor scenario for MGM Resorts. Um, it means a lot to our 60,000 plus employees because we want to set an example of living the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King on a daily basis, not just today, although we're here to celebrate his birthday today. And so it's really indicative when you talk about the theme, collaboration of today of this parade, collaboration as far as moving forward together and achieving the team together. That's what our motto is at MGM Resorts, working with our communities, where we operate and making sure that we're providing opportunities for suppliers, for potential employees, not for some, but for all of us. And that's what I was going to ask you, right? When we talk about King's Dream, we often think about what that means for us, but it's also important for businesses and corporations to keep that in mind as well. It is. You know, when you think about the opportunity, the impact that these businesses have on the communities where they operate, for example, MGM Resorts, we're the largest employer in the state of Nevada. And so when you talk about the largest employer in the state um, and really pleather throughout other states, there's a responsibility that we carry. And it's a responsibility to make sure that those goals and making those communities better in a lot of different ways. We have a lot of issues facing our communities where we operate as well as across the country. And it's important for corporations such as MGM Resorts to step up and focus on what matters. It is so important. And of course, with today being a national holiday, we know so many people have the day off from work. But of course, we want to think about today as a day of service, because that is truly the best way to honor the legacy of Dr. King. So it really is incredible to see all your employees spending their day off out here being a part Absolutely. of this parade. How important Absolutely. was that? That's important. And I think it is a tone from the top of our corporation, um, from our board of directors to our senior leadership to make sure that we are not only taking the day off, uh, as you know, we are a service industry and we have many of our uh, colleagues who are really 
there serving our guests today. Um, but when you think about the individuals that are out here today as well, representing those um, who are serving our guests and who are making sure that we're providing customer service, we think about really knowing that being out here has to be indicative in setting example, not only externally, but internally as well. And when you start talking about in today's society, you start talking about the biases that we might, uh, that, that some you know, might have, you start talking about fairness, we start talking about equity, we have to make sure that we're sending a message in what we participate in that it is that message that shows the vision of where we want to continue to move as an organization and as a corporation. So I'm grateful to be a part of this uh, organization. Uh, I've been with the company for 20 years, um, so uh, it's been a great company. But you look at my time and you look at the time of an individual like Wendell P. Williams and the time he served with the Martin Luther King Committee to keep bringing this and making this vision and this legacy evident for our community. Tony, we appreciate you being here and sharing with us this time. You probably want to get back with the rest of your Yeah, I'll go and catch up with the team, put my, put my sneakers on and go catch up with the team. Great, thanks for being here. Thank we you so much, Tony. Absolutely, appreciate thank you. Right now, you're looking at the, the devastating divas of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, one of the members of the Divine Nine. Take a listen. And we definitely have to, to say a special uh, happy Founders Day to the devastating divas of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. On, celebrated, on Saturday, they celebrated 111 years. Founded on the campus of Howard University on January 13, 1913, the organization requires its members to exemplify and encourage high cultural, intellectual, and moral standards. Members, should uh, their public and personal behavior should reflect the ideals and principles of sisterhood. We'll be right back. Welcome back to this broadcast of the 42nd annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Parade live from downtown Las Vegas. We right now are seeing Nevada Dems making their way down the street. Behind them is some kiddos from Beverly S. Mathis Elementary School. We have seen kids from schools from practically every corner of the valley today. Yeah, I love this elementary school for their mascot. It's the Mustangs, but they have a facility dog named Cyrus. And he sent a message saying that he's two years old, he's still in training, so it's important to ask for permission to pet him. But he lists bacon, swimming, playing fetch, and belly rubs as his favorite things. I, <laughs> I love, love that. Yes. I love that. <laughs> cute kiddos out here making their way down the parade route. We've also got a crew of reporters on the parade route as well, and I have a feeling that the party is probably following Abel, as it always does. <laughs> so we're going to check in with Abel. What do you see and where you're at? Uh, Anjali and Justin, let me tell you, we took a break from the dancing, and now I also want to recognize the hardworking men and women in our community who are always helping Las Vegas stay clean. I have Brian here from Republic Services, and Brian, just how critical is it for you to bring out some of your men and women out here today for such an important day? It's very important for us to come out. We have over 750 drivers in our in our community, uh, over 1,500 employees working every day to keep our community uh, clean, and uh, so it's important for us to come out and honor Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy, and it's critically important for our team to be involved in this great day and this, this such a remarkable event. We really do thank you for everything you do here in our community. You keep our community clean. Definitely, we know that a lot of the landfill wouldn't be able to be picked up if it wasn't for you guys as well. But again, when you're out here connecting with so many people who truly represent our Las Vegas community, what does that mean for you, for this company, for everybody who works here? It means a lot to us. Um, we, uh, Our employees live and work in this community, and it's very important for us to be a part of the communities where our employees live and work. 
Um, it, it's uh, this is a great occasion, uh, you know, obviously honoring Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy and everything he's done for equality for all people. And so for our employees, it's very important for us to do that. And we value this and, you know, being a part of uh, our community is one of our values. That's incredible. How long have you lived here in the Las Vegas community? I've been in Las Vegas for three years and I love it. love every minute of it and enjoy this wonderful community. Do you think that this truly exemplifies what Las Vegas is all about? A diverse, beautiful population that loves to embrace everyone? Oh, absolutely. This certainly uh, exemplifies everything about Las Vegas. This is why we love Las Vegas. We love this community. Me and my family love it. And certainly our employees love and, and enjoy everything we do in this community every day to keep it safe, safe and environmentally friendly and clean. So, Brian, thank you so much for your time. What thank a pleasure you. to meet you, and thank you for what you do for our city. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Take thank care. You. Appreciate you. you. No, thank you. And, of course, our Rachel Moore is also down there at 4th and Gas as we are passing this incredible garbage truck here, Rachel. What are you seeing down over there? <laughs> Abel, the Super Bowl just passed by us, but I first want to introduce you to this young lady. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about your organization and, and what it is to be a part of this MLK Day Parade. Uh, my name is Sheree Smith. I am with the City of Las Vegas Batteries Included Youth Program and the Senior Center. And it, it's just, it's amazing, you know, to work with the kids, to work with the elderly, to bring them all together, just to come out here and have fun and mingle in the community. What do you want your kids to learn about MLK Day and this man? Um, the significance, you know, it was funny listening to the kids and they were like, well, why are the garbage people here? And I'm like, you don't understand what he really stood for and how much he fought for, not just black and white, but just injustice overall. Thank you so much. And we also have a, a wonderful team, a dance team that's coming by over here. Thank you. We're going to send it back to you at the anchor at the base. All right, Rachel, thank you so much. I'm so excited to see that Super Bowl when it finally make it, makes its way to where we are at 4th and Bridger. But right now, we just saw the Girl Scouts of Southern Nevada come by. Right now, it looks like we are seeing, it, this could be the Desert Oasis High School Army J-O-R-O-T-C. Oh, no, that's not actually it. This might be the Nevada Prince Hall family of Masons and Eastern Stars. That sounds right. Uh, we are, believe it or not, only about 30 entries through, and we've got about a lineup of 240, I think we said yes. earlier. So, so much more to see and so much more to take in as this parade continues to make its way down 4th Street. Yeah, you had mentioned the uh, Nevada Prince Hall family of Mason and Eastern Stars. Uh, they were established in 1980 for men and women who follow the tenets of Masonry, the Order of the Eastern Stars, the largest fraternal organization in the world for men and women. The Nevada Grand Chapter has 20 chapters all across the state, known for its ceremonies, lessons on moral values, and the friendships of like-minded sisters and brothers, and its members strive to build a better, more fulfilling way of life for all. Now coming behind them, what you mentioned earlier, Desert Oasis High School Army, JROTC, that's the Diamondbacks Battalion. They will be coming up shortly after them. This program just started a couple of years ago. Mission to develop cadet citizenship, character, leadership traits, and responsibility. And the program leaders are making it a priority to build good social and career skills within their students. So many youth organizations we're seeing here today, and we absolutely love to see it. We talked about how this parade is just one of several things that go on during King Week here in Las Vegas. There's also a tech summit that uh, the parade's founder, Wendell Williams, told us about earlier that really helps to foster careers in technology for youth in our community. Uh, there is a MLK scholarship banquet that happened over the weekend, and there's still more events to come even after this parade. There's the Dreamer Awards and then the MLK Jazz Night at the Orleans. So it does not end here when we talk about King Week celebrations. And really, this is a mission that the founder of this parade wants us to be on every day of the year. He talks about King Week being every week. We have to carry out the teachings and the vision of Dr. King, not just today, but each and every single day uh, as we walk through this life together here in Las Vegas. And that really starts at a young age, right? Yeah. From the kids. And that's why you're seeing so many kids out here. Of course, much more to this parade when we come back after this quick break.
Welcome back to the 42nd Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Parade live from downtown Las Vegas. Really quick, right now we are actually seeing two of this year's Grand Marshals making their way down the parade. Right, right now we're at 4th and Bridger and that right there and that red convertible is Bishop Tommy and Lady Shirley Collier. Uh, they are two faith leaders and really a big focus on faith in this year's parade. And actually right now joining us we have a former Grand Marshal of a parade, Shondell Newsom, with some new marketing. Uh, Tell us about the role that you guys have played in, in bringing this parade to life this year. Well, we're excited because Wendell actually asked us to become like the successor to help him carry the parade beyond the next 42 years. So it's really exciting, like some new marketing gets this uh, privilege of carrying on the dream of Dr. King. You really started that journey last year uh, when I started to cover this parade. I've already seen the growth this year. Where does it continue to go? Well, it continues to grow to even larger, right? Because people don't realize that Dr. King is an international hero, right? So Las Vegas is an international city. So just imagine more people coming to join us for this parade. And we also talk about the importance of the MLK committee selecting a local black owned business such as yours to kind of take the lead with, with organizing this year's parade and getting things together. That shows that you guys aren't just talking the talk, we're, you're walking the walk here in the parade. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that Dr. King, um, you know, he was assassinated in 68 when I was born. So we, we do feel a, an obligation to carry on the journey of economic diversification. And really with my daughter uh, becoming the CEO of our company after all these years, it's amazing. And, and it is, is really, that's one of the big parts of Dr. King's dream. It's all about the legacy, passing yes, it down to the next generation. The yes. What's your favorite thing about the parade? My favorite thing is watching people smile and laugh and celebrate a day of service. That's my, that's my favorite part. I like that. Now we also, we talk about how so many people, when they think of Dr. King, they think of that, of course, that iconic speech, I have a dream, but you guys want folks to really look at his whole body of work, kind of his teachings on making sure there's equal opportunity for all. Tell me about that. Absolutely, you know, and, and we focused on a lot of diversification when it comes to equal opportunity. Like, you know, I'm, I'm watching it, the, soon the RTC float, we're talking about, you know, when we talk about um, um, environmental justice, environmental justice yeah. right? And Environmental justice is a big piece that people don't talk about. And there are many different justices. What did he say? Um, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. But he wasn't just talking about racial justice. It was a lot of injustices that happened within our society that Dr. King championed um, before, he, before he left. Well, a lot of people point to this concept of environmental justice really starting with Dr. King. That terminology didn't exist back then, but some of his teachings still instill that. And you see the RTC with, with launching its, its hybrid bus that it's got marching in the parade, yes. or I guess driving down the parade. Right, right. Um, right, and the electric buses and how that contributes to society as yes. a whole. Yes, in most, in most um, underserved and low-income neighborhoods, you know, there, there's always a cry for equality, right? When you go to the nicer neighborhoods, you see, you see nice curbs, you see uh, crosswalks, you see lighting, these complete street lightings that talk to you. Well, that's one of the things that I know for a fact that the RTC was working on to make sure that all communities experience the same things. So just this again is it goes beyond just you know sitting at a lunch counter or drinking from a water fountain and, and even you know when you think about even the small business diversification the minority businesses when you think about like in this in this state we have uh, we, we have over 300,000 small businesses right but people don't realize that 99.2 percent of the businesses and companies in Nevada are small businesses so diversification of economy Different things like that are just, you know, that's what that's what Dr. King was looking for. Just equality all the way around. And uh, do you feel like this year's parade is kind of more representative of, of more people as Wendell Williams had hoped so? Absolutely. I think that, um, like, when Wendell started, it was like 13. It was probably mostly churches, right? And, and probably the parade started with more churches because of Dr. King's background. But that is, you know, a, a small part of what Dr. King, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was uh, uh, not only a theoli, theologi, theolo, theologist, 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 but, yeah, you know, <laughs> what word I'm looking for, but he, he, he just spanned the globe with so many areas, health care, you know, uh, child care, just different things. And that's what you're seeing in the parade. That's why it's expanding and growing because it's touching more people. And the unity of everybody coming together to move in that direction. Absolutely. Yeah, the unity is, is the part that, that makes it all work, right? Because he used to say, you know, I, I love his saying when he said, hey, what, 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 good, what good is if a person could sit at a lunch counter if they can't afford a meal? 
So all of that comes back. But also, what good is it for you to build your legacy if you can't live to see it? So health care issues come in. Mental health comes in. So I did the ultimate measure of a man um, this week really focusing on bringing men to a different level and understanding their mental health. It was almost like I, I always say that, you know, women sit around, they have their waiting to excel moment, right? <laughs> they sit around and drink and, and, and talk and, and, and spill their guts. And, okay, now let's come together. Let's cry. We did that with men. Nice. How'd it go? Yeah. Got to, got to, got to put it out there, yes. right? Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. I think it's so important to to start these conversations. Absolutely, uh, that's how we create change. Shondell, thank you so much for joining us. This we know you probably have pleasure. a very busy day ahead. It's One of the busy. biggest parades we've had. So, yes. thank you so much. It's for been joining. a blessing, and thank you to KTMV 13 and, and 34 for being a partner Absolutely. in all of this. This is wonderful. We're on. So thank you. Thank you. All righty. All right, now you're looking at this. Looks like North Las Vegas. We've got the mayor in the front. Uh, it's Mayor Pamela Goins Brown, the first black mayor in the state of Nevada. It looks like the fire department as well. She's on there uh, as we're waving to them. Uh, she is on the fire truck here in North Las Vegas. She's a trailblazer, really, in her own right. You mentioned the first black mayor in Nevada. We have so many firsts, so many change makers along this parade route today. So really wonderful to see that all on foot, full display and to see Nevada kind of being at the forefront of change. Now, if you're wondering what all that noise is right now, looks like we've got some first responders making their way down. We got a fire truck here, and then after that, it looks like we have the North Las Vegas Fire Department, Police Department, rather, following along. Of course, the mayor of North Las Vegas just a couple floats ahead. So uh, we're gonna give you a moment just to take it all in because you may not be able to hear me anyway. <laughs> Now we are at 4th and Bridger, just one of the spots where we have a number of crews stationed all along the parade route. So we want to check in with Isabella Mar Martin and see where she is and, and who she's talking to. Hey there, Isabella. Hello, Justin. I am just right at the end of the parade route. We just saw some garbage trucks pass by, and I am here with Jervon, and he brought eight kids with him today. Jervon, tell me, what brings you guys out here? Why do you think it's so important to you know, bring your kids to this event? Well, um, I just want to uplift the memory of Martin Luther King and, uh, you know, the whole Black History uh, Month that's coming up. Uh, and, you know, pass that down to them so that they know what to live for and, you know, what, what was good for them and, and good for their heart and their heritage. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, I saw you guys dancing over there and having a lot of fun. Tell me, how what, what has your time been like here so far? Well, it's it great. We've seen a lot of uh, groups that we've never seen before and uh, come up and the kids seen bands and, and uh, dancers. That's always good. Uh, they never really get to see that that stuff. So that, that's always good that we they get to see that. Yeah. I'm so glad you guys could come out. Um, we'll keep you updated on our end. Back to you, Justin and Anjali. <laughs> All right, Isabella, thank you so much for that live report down on the parade route. Right now we are watching 100 black men of Las Vegas making their way down. All right, now we're going to send things over to commercial break. We'll have so much more right here in a couple of minutes. Stay with us. The man in black. Welcome back to the 42nd Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Parade. You are looking at Legacy High School Marching Band, Color Guard, and the dance team. This is a big group. This is one of the largest programs in the state when it comes to marching bands. It consists of 140 members, and it is led by Dr. Curtis Melton. This group receives superior ratings every year, and they have experience. They performed in LA in Memorial Day Parades in 2016 and 2017. They marched in the Disneyland Parade in 2018 and in 2019. They marched in San Francisco's annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. So a lot of experience here with this band. Very impressive, and they are deserving of each and every one of those opportunities just by listening to them right now. Very, very impressive. Now, right now, we want to check back in with one of our crews down along the parade route. 
Uh, we're going to check in with our Rachel Moore. Rachel, what are you seeing? Hey, Anjali, Justin. So we just had Anthem walk by. You can see their uh, pom-poms are swinging right here. <laughs> They're going down the parade route. I just spoke with the CEO of Anthem, and she said it was very important for them to be out here on this uh, important day. Right now, Sigma Gamma Rose Sorority Incorporated coming down. This sorority played a major role in the civil rights root movement, marching with Dr. King along with a lot of the other uh, historically black fraternities and sororities. Sororities. I'm going to send it back to you. We have more of those fraternities coming by, including the fraternity that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a part of, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. But for now, I'm going to send it over to Abel Garcia, who is in the middle of the parade route. Abel. Rachel, you know we always like to have a good time out here. We are integrating with our community, getting to know some incredible people on this amazing Martin Luther King Jr. parade here in downtown Las Vegas. Right now, I want to give you guys an opportunity to meet our Las Vegas Westernettes. Just take a look at these amazing dance moves. Look at their amazing outfits. These ladies are stunning. They're out here showing us off right now. And I tried to dance with them a little earlier. Let me tell you, it was really hard to keep up. These ladies know what they're doing. And look at, they got style, they got glam. They are killing it out here. I'm gonna speak with the founder here, Nora. And Nora, tell me how incredibly important is it for you to be out here getting involved with your community and just showing off your amazing dance moves. It's very important to us because we go way back to the 70s. And um, we haven't did the MLK parade in a long time. And having my sister next to me, we were co-captains along with our leader who we lost in 2018. So we're representing him, Billy Patterson. I love that. I love that. And yes. tell me just what MLK Parade means to you to be out here right now. I mean, we see you guys have prepared many different types of dances for us. It's been a dream my, for a long time. It's been a dream. And I just, I'm so cheered up right now. Oh, my, it's been a, oh my God. I just can't explain it. I love that. Can you guys show me some dance moves? Can yes. I dance with you? Okay. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right. All right, Justin and Anjali. I'm going to have to have you guys get off that stage and come and join this because we're having a blast out here at the MLK Parade. Let's kill it. Thank you. Well, Abel, we've got another show right here. You are looking at the Las Vegas Super Bowl. And this is the Super Bowl host committee's float. Super Bowl February 11th, right around the corner. And they are working overtime to get ready. Yeah, this parade happening just a few weeks, as you mentioned, before the big game comes here to Las Vegas. It'll be played at Allegiant Stadium. The Super Bowl host committee being a part of this parade in the Las Vegas Super Bowl is one of the reasons why the founder told me he believes there's so much increased interest around the parade this year, just that really fitting timing. We also mentioned at the top of this broadcast that the uh, Super Bowl host committee surprised Wendell Williams, the founder of this parade, with two tickets to the Super Bowl this year. So that is so deserving and so wonderful to see. Right now, though, I want to turn your attention to the Dragon Battalion. We've got some students here who look like they're about to do a performance. So let's take a look. Thank you all so much. You look really, really good. Incredible. I'm singing my song, y'all. Keep it moving. Thank you all. Give it up, everybody, for this Junior ROTC looking good. Give it Thank up. you. That is the Dragon Battalion from Del Sol Academy of the Performing Arts. They've earned Magnet School of Distinction in 2018, 2020, and 2022, and Magnet School of Excellence in 2019 and 2023. 
<laughs> very, very impressive. Certainly some future leaders right there. We'll have much more right after this commercial break. Stay with us. Transitioning boys into men. Together You are looking at the city of Las Vegas, a Doolittle complex for seniors and the youth aspects of it. Uh, we should mention the Doolittle Active Adult Center is temporarily closed for renovations, but when it does reopen, $1.5 million project that will include upgraded restrooms, new heating and air conditioning, LED lighting, paint and flooring, uh, and upgraded finishes. So a lot happening at the Doolittle Center. Um, and certainly an important place and a sense of community. We talk about community here at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday parade. Uh, community for our seniors in our community. Very important for them to have a place to go to be able to be themselves and interact with one another and, and have fun. Yeah, and actually one of our grand marshals today, Bobby Ray McRoy, he is a longtime employee of the City of Las Vegas' Recreation Department, and he has very close ties, worked very closely with the Doolittle Center for decades now. So really cool to see that connection there. Right now, though, we want to check in with our Justin Bruce, who is in Live Drive. He's actually at the end of the parade route now, but he's going to show us his view from where he's at. Justin, what do you see on? You know, Anjali, we, we actually were at the end of the parade route, and then we did the loop-de-loop, -loop, and now we are at the beginning of the parade route. This is such a large uh, parade uh, that there are folks who are just starting their parade route. We're at 4th and Gas. Uh, so yeah, we, we went through the entire parade. Uh, our vehicle, Live Drive, was in the 20s or the 30s. Well, there are more than 175 entries in the parade. You can see the crowds are still here. Uh, yeah, we've got some, some folks who uh, are uh, still enjoying the festivities, hearing the marching bands get going. So still lots of excitement here back at the beginning of the parade route. And just look at the crowds. Everyone's having a great time, smiles on all the faces. And of course, what would a parade in Las Vegas be if it wasn't in front of a wedding chapel? Am I right? Not too far from where we are is, uh, I believe, Rachel Moore. Rachel, you have been just a font of knowledge for many of the groups who have gone by. What are you seeing right now? What a, okay. We're with Desert High School, the dance team right now. They're going to give us a performance for us. Again, this is Desert High School, their dance team. Oh my goodness, just amazing ladies right here. We're gonna send it back to you at the Anchor Des. Sounds good, Rachel. I love that everybody's just having a great time here at this parade, really celebrating what this day is all about, and that is remembering the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Absolutely, and you know, she had a performance she was showing us over there, Rachel, but we just saw a performance of our own here at Fourth and Bridger, the Las Vegas legendary Westernettes. It's a drill team. Now, the organizer of this parade, Wendell Williams, told me there's actually more drill teams, I believe, than ever before in the parade this year, some coming from L.A., some from here in Las Vegas. Uh, right now, though, you see this couple here in the convertible. The male there is Bobby Ray McRoy. He is that Grand Marshal I mentioned earlier, a longtime employee of the city of Las Vegas' recreation department, been really instrumental in uh, helping the folks out at the Doolittle Center, and then also creating programming surrounding Black History Month for the youth. So really a fitting Grand Marshal there. You see him waving to the crowd. Really awesome to see. Yes, indeed. Now behind him, we have Victory Baptist church. A senior pastor, Sean A. Taylor, gave his inaugural message December 31st of 2021. So new in that position. Now they have ministries for children, youth, young adults, and men. And the program places special emphasis on growing, writing, critical thinking, organization, and reading, as well as college and career readiness. 
It's really, really cool. so many Victoria wonderful Church. organizations are a part of this parade here. Uh, we are only, I would say, about 30, 40 entries in the parade <laughs> down, so there's so much more to go. So the party surely does not stop here. We've talked about how today is a celebration, but we've also talked about how it's important for us to acknowledge the work that still lies ahead as we continue to try to carry out the, the vision of, of Dr. King and his hope for society where everyone can really prosper. Uh, so this is all a part of that and a part of uh, showing a united display here in Las Vegas. This is, the city should be proud of what we're doing here today. A thousand percent. We were talking to Sean Del Newsom earlier, talking about having this parade go from organizers from generation to generation, kind of turned over to his hands so that he can let it grow for the next 40 or so years. And it is nice to see the community come together. You have so many different community groups and organizations like this one right here. Let's take a listen. Praise right. dancing and dancing, an important part of the church community, so you see it right there. It certainly is. That was Victory, the empowering church. I also have to mention, we've seen some really creative floats in this parade here today. The one from Victory Church is pretty impressive right there. Earlier, we also saw a giant birthday cake float yes. in honor, of course, Dr. King and his birthday. Today would have been his 95th birthday. With that, we're going to set things to commercial break. We'll see you right back here in just a couple of minutes. All right, welcome back. We are having a great time out here <laughs> watching all of these community members participate in this parade. And I mean, it's the silver and black. We've got our <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders making their way down the road right now. Didn't have the year that we wanted them to, it's but okay. you know what? There's always next year. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. There's always next year. And I think that there's a lot of positive energy surrounding this team right now, just with some of the, the changes they've made and a lot of the advancements they've made, too, in terms of having an interim head coach who's African-American, having an interim GM who's African-American, of course, Sandra Douglas Morgan, who is the president of the team being African-American. They're a real pillar of, of diversity and representation here in the Valley. And so awesome to see them be a part of this wonderful parade here today. Right now, though, we want to check in with our Isabella Martin, who is down along the parade route. Isabella, looks like you've got some folks you're talking to there. Five seconds. Hello, Justin and Anjali. I have been having such a blast. We just saw the Super Bowl go right by us, and then we saw some ladies busting some moves, having some fun, and I spotted Shirley, and she was dancing as well. So, Shirley, tell me a little bit about the dance moves that you've been doing and how much fun you've been having. I'm having a lot of fun. I don't know what kind of dance I'll do, but I'll just do it like they be doing. <laughs> What's been your favorite part so far today? My favorite what? Your favorite part about the parade. The whole parade. All I can see is nice. I love to see the kids. And I'm from Chicago, and we don't have parades like this in Chicago. But I'm enjoying the parade, and I'm enjoying myself watching it. And this is your first time coming to the MLK parade? Yes, it is. My first time coming out here to see a parade. And I'm going to guess that you're going to be back next year, too. Oh, you know I will be. <laughs> with my chair. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Shirley. We're having so much fun out here. Back to you guys. <laughs> I love that answer. She said, you know I will be. And that's really amazing. We're seeing people of all ages coming out here, maybe for the 10th time, maybe for the first time. And I think we're definitely going to have a lot of people returning again this year. This is so incredible to see. Right now we are seeing Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. She is one of the grand marshals of this parade this year. She is there waving at folks as she makes her way down 4th Street. We mentioned this being an election year, so all the politicians that are out and about certainly see them really up and down this parade route uh, we talked about you know 
the campaigns to get people out to vote. Doesn't matter who you vote for, uh, but just register to vote and have your voice being heard. That also is a big part of the legacy of Dr. King and, and being engaged in what takes place in your community, what's important to you. So such an important aspect of this career. Absolutely. It is so important that everyone gets out and exercises their right to vote. Uh, and we know there are so many wonderful people in our community helping make that possible and really encouraging folks to get out there. We talked earlier with Craig Knight from Power 88.1 uh, about his uh, initiative there to help get folks out and about and voting so that will be fully in effect again this year as we get more uh, closer and closer to those election events here in Nevada. Now right now we are continuing to see more community groups making their way down 4th Street right now we're at 4th and Bridger and we are seeing a group called Voices making their way down. We have seen so many different groups represented here today from businesses big and small to faith groups to of course politicians to drill teams from far kids from schools all across the valley it's a really great representation of our valley i think when we started preparing for this parade with all the different groups that were going to be here uh, we were about around 150 or so <laughs> i talked to one of the organizers this morning he said there are now 240 groups so there are some groups in here that were like oh this is interesting they're part of the parade too but it just goes to show you how much this parade means to this community and how many people want to be a part of it it has continued to grow over the years starting with just 13 floats now 240 that is a lot of folks who want to be a part of this and it's great to see the community come out to take part in it you see the audience members here folks with their phones out you see people of all ages just ready to celebrate and remember the legacy of dr king and again today is all about unity again the theme is living the dream together we make the dream work I have a feeling that today we are making the dream work. Just look at the sheer amount of people out here having a good time. It is so wonderful to see. This parade has come a long way. And I know Wendell Williams, the founder of the parade, told me he had people calling him just a few days ago trying to get into it. So that probably uh, is an explanation for some of these last minute entries that we're seeing so wonderful to see. He also told me that in the parade's first year when they had barely a dozen entries, he would go door to door, knocking on people's doors asking them to be a part of this parade so just see how far we have come just four decades later to now see people knocking on his door to try to get in and be a part of this wonderful day and knowing Wendell he doesn't want to turn anybody away no he would never because um, this is a big part of the community and, and for a man who grew up in Louisiana grew up in the south and didn't see the love and the appreciation when he first got to Vegas for Dr. King which is one of the reasons why he wanted to start this parade and to see that to go from that to what it is now and the potential of where it can go over the next 40 years is really just inspiring. All these people wanting to, you know, live the dream of Dr. King. Hopefully the next 40 years and beyond, this will surely be a staple of the Las Vegas community for years and years to come. And we want to thank all of you at home who joined us for this broadcast, whether it was on Channel 13 or Vegas 34. You know, this is really a part of our commitment to being a part of this community. And we know that not everyone can come out here and, and watch this parade in person. So that's why it was so important for us to make sure this is accessible to folks who are even at, at home and able to watch this from there. Now, right now, we are continuing to see uh, CSN making their way down at Ford Street. Uh, they've got a little banner there celebrating, uh, saying celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I know kids there getting ready to return to class from winter break. Yes, yeah, and to your point, you were just mentioning the folks who can't necessarily come out to this parade. Um, well, guess what? If you didn't get to see all of it, you still have another opportunity. It will be on February 11th at 2.30. We're going to have the best moments of this parade that you can watch on Channel 13. So just because we are wrapping up doesn't mean that the fun and the entertainment has to end. You've got another chance to watch. And please do. And right now we're going to leave you just with a live look at the parade. Soak it all in. Thanks for watching Las Vegas.